In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for this gift of life that you've given us. We thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you for this gift of time that you've given us. Thank you for all the participants, Lord, who have gathered here. And even those who will be listening to this recording. As your word says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, when two or more are gathered in your name, you are there in our midst. Yes, Lord Jesus, right here, right now, presence is with you. Holy Spirit, you know what every participant needs. You know which areas of our lives we need courage. Take complete authority of us. Take complete authority of our minds and our vocal cords. So that let every word that is spoken over here be only glorified Jesus and nothing of ours, Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus. Okay. So, in yesterday's class, we were learning about changing the way we think. Okay. So, many times in the world, people give more focus to the actions means if I change my action, then I can change the thinking, right? But the word of God says, once I change the way I think, then by default, my actions will change. For example, if there was somebody struggling with an addiction, okay, and the person would try the level best to, um, you know, change his action change his habit. But every time he would go on his willpower, he would fail. But praise God, thank you, Jesus. He got the word and he started spending time in the word of God. And as he began listening day by day, day by day, month by month, what happened? His focus shifted from the desire to drink, his addiction, his habit, the word and the word in him which you know encouraged his spirit which built him up in faith with that praise god the his habit changed the desire to drink the addiction everything left he didn't have to leave it those things left and that is exactly what happens when i come to the word of god okay so yesterday we were learning that spending time in the word of God is going to result in me changing the way I think. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So today we will learn more about it. I just share my screen. This is a minute. Praise Jesus. Okay. So I'll read this. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. The birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have 
much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears, let them hear. Is gone. Thank you, Jesus. So this is nothing but the parable of the sower and the seed. Okay? And I have, you know, uh, thought this many times in the Bible classes. But every time I go to this parable, Holy Spirit has something new to teach me newer revelations. That is the beauty of it. Okay? So Jesus started with this parable. Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. Okay? Now this seed is nothing but the seed called the word of God. Now whenever Jesus would teach about the kingdom of God, he would give simple examples because the people whom he was ministering to, they were not educated people. They could not understand spiritual truths with their natural senses. And that is why Jesus, to make them make it easy for them to understand, he would teach them in parables. So now he's talking about a farmer who went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Okay? So, the seed is the word of God. And that seed, as he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path. Now, clearly all of us know that this parable is talking about the seed called the word of God. And second thing, about the different types of soil. There are four soils, the pathway soil, the rocky soil, the thorny soil, and the good soil. Praise Jesus. So, the soil resembles our heart condition. Every person who is receiving the word. The seed is the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. So, I want to ask you all this. Other, you know, when a farmer is planting the seed, not necessary that every seed he plants, uh, you know, has to bear fruit, isn't it? So what could be the reasons why, you know, the harvest has failed? Praise Jesus. Okay. So the different reasons why the harvest can fail is, one is, when the farmer does not plant the seed, that is one. Second thing, if there is something wrong with the seed. Third thing is when the, you know, the pests, the insects, then the weather conditions. These are the other reasons why the seed cannot come up. In the same way, okay, the seed called the word of God, there's nothing wrong with it. I just mentioned that if there is something wrong with the seed, the seed will not sprout. But this seed which we are speaking is not a corruptible seed, but it is an incorruptible seed. There is a verse that says that. Let's go to it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Is good. Thank you, Jesus.
For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. Okay. So this seed that Jesus is speaking about, that is the word of God, is not a perishable seed, but is an imperishable seed. Initially, when all of us were born, we were born of a seed. Now, anything in, you know, the nature you see, the way God created things, everything was in the form of a seed. Everything that God created was in the form of a seed. Now, I am a seed of my mother's womb, right? In the same way, even all of you, the seed of our parents, that is what gives rise to us. That's what we learned in biology, right? And that's how God created it to be. But in the same way, Jesus is talking about this seed called the word of God. And this is a spiritual birth. And that is why we have been born again. Now, what exactly is to be born again is a different topic in itself. So today we won't go on that one. But we will stick to the word of God being the incorruptible seed. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. So in our lives in the past, we were living the way we wanted to live. We did not have anything to do with the word of God. I'm talking about myself as well. For three years of my life, three years behind, I had nothing to do with Jesus. I had nothing to do with the Bible. I had nothing to do with the word of God. And when the gospel was preached, when I received the word of God, I experienced the love of God and that changed me. And this word of God was in the form of a seed, which was imperishable. Nothing can destroy it. That's why it says, right? Heaven and earth will fail, but my word will still remain. That is about the word of God. God's word is never going to change, no matter what. It is going to remain forever. It is imperishable. Incorruptible. Can never be destroyed. That is the power in the seed called the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. So when I plant this seed called the word of God in my heart and I water it every day, it has tremendous power. You know, I did not know this when I planted the seed of the word of God in my heart. When I was listening to the teaching, I was taking down notes. I did not know the potential until I experienced it personally in my life. It started with when I was in depression, the word of God helped me to come out of it as I studied deeper and deeper in the word. Okay. Now, when it came to even other areas of my life, the area of, you know, uh, in the area of making corrections in my life, changing my character. Now, on my own, is it easy for me to change my nature? No. You would have heard a lot of people saying, you know, um, that is that person's nature to be angry. That is that person's nature to be, you know, uh, this way and that way. Many people say that. And it is not possible in the worldly sense to change a person's nature because that is the person is trying to change his nature by his own effort. And that is not possible. Anything, you know, you try by willpower, one, two days, three days, it will work. But it will fail after some point because it is willpower. It is not God's power. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, um, I will tell you about, you know, how the word helped me. This seed called the word of God helped me to change my character as a person. So, before I came to the word of God, I had a lot of strongholds. Okay? 
the stronghold was i was a very shy girl i would not like to you know speak to much people i would like to keep to myself i would not like to open up i would not get involved in anything so that was one area where the you know the word of god changed me it made me bold and that is why today i can you know put my camera on and speak about the word of god it is nothing of me if i have to see 3 years back i would have not thought i would have never imagined that you know i would be able to do these things but little by little praise god holy spirit help me the word of god help me to come out of it thank you jesus that is the first thing another thing was okay i had this uh, spirit of you know what you say a uh, competitive jealousy in the sense that i would you know i wouldn't mind helping people but i would feel insecure if they got better of me and that is why i would only share how much is required to you know be average but i would not share beyond that because in my head it's like i'm working hard i'm doing this why should i share that's what the world teaches us right and then this particular verse changed my life when i came in the world i will just share that thank you holy spirit Okay. this says james chapter 3 verse 13 onward speaks about the two kinds of wisdom it says who is wise and understanding among you let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast about it or deny the truth such wisdom does not come from heaven but it is earthly unspiritual and demonic for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice okay this line for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice that line changed my life i'll tell you how so holy spirit you know asked me this one question this was almost i think 2 years 2 to 3 years back yeah in 2020 when i got this holy spirit said you yeah, are you're a doctor right like yeah and if you look into the world you see many people who are very successful in the world standard along with their success they are getting something free and what is that free disorder why because their heart condition is not right their heart condition is filled with envy and selfish ambition and because of that that thing that they are getting free is disorder and every evil work it doesn't say some evil work it says every evil work so that is why you know even though those people who are running after the world things with you know a selfish or a self centered motive what is happening they are having all sicknesses they are having all the kind of lifestyle disorders they are having even this particular sleep disorders and many other mental illnesses and that's where i realized wow only holy spirit can teach you and convict you that way and that is when you know that motivated me this word of god you know it inspired me this revelation it inspired me to make the correction in my life where i started sharing without feeling insecure all that the devil puts in your mind you know that uh, you are working hard that person is uh, you know 
doesn't deserve it. All these are lies. This insecurity, this competitive jealousy, this bitterness, this envy, this focus on, you know, this self-pity. These all things don't come from God's kingdom. It is a seed from the kingdom of darkness. And that is why God doesn't want us to dwell in that. And how do I know this truth? I will know this truth when I spend time in the word. Only when I spend time in the word, the Holy Spirit, who is the author, who is the teacher, will give me the revelations. And as he continues to give me the revelations and I make the correction, I follow the instructions in the word of God, then I will see victory in every area of my life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Uncle Rupert, you want to add something on what we are learning? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise God. I actually wanted to teach on the parable of the sower and the seed, but then Holy Spirit, you know, he took us into this about the seed called the word of God, how I can apply it in different areas of my life. And that is how it is with the Holy Spirit. I might have a plan. I might come with, you know, I'm going to teach about this. But Holy Spirit has his own plans. Exactly. And if I submit to him, he brings the best. Yes, uncle. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, actually, uh, every time you, you know you hear the word of God, it's, it's not that you have heard it one time, two times. You can hear it a thousand times. And every time you hear it, it is a new dimension. You know, that's how that's how I have experienced. And today also you exp you explained it in a different uh, uh, dimension altogether. You know, the uh, the soil and you know even your uh, uh, personal experience and you know what uh, you know like you were a very shy. I remember. I remember. I can endorse whatever you have said. I remember you as a fourteen year old or say fifteen year old coming and you know and. I used to really, uh, uh, I I could see something in you, you know, as a child. Like you know, I mean, there is there is something in this uh, little girl, and also your brother. You know, he happened to be our uh, uh, what do you call it, student in uh, in in the church. He's in the Catholic class, and uh, he was like, uh, I think you are too. Uh, uh, even he's he's like you, very shy type, right? I mean, was. <laughs> You are not shy now. He was. Think, he was. Yeah, he was. Uh, how is he now? How is uh, Ashwin He's now? blessed. Uncle, he's, he's blessed. blessed. He's, he's out of the shyness. Right? He's out of the shyness. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so this is why I want to just endorse. And today you are uh, so bold. Oh my God. This guy is dangerous. So, uh, yeah. So to, uh, today, uh, today you are so boldly talking. I think that is itself a testimony by itself. Nah? Yeah. Praise Jesus. I'm so glad, Uncle. There is an I eyewitness know. in this yeah. session. Because I know you as a baby and I know you what you are today and I'll know you what is tomorrow. Because this is it. it and the Holy Spirit, this is another thing I would like to say, share. He, uh, the Holy Spirit teaches us uh, in such a way that, I mean, it, uh, unimaginable ways, you know. Only you and I will know because uh, the way we, uh, I have seen you grow, and the way you have seen me grow also, like uh, my testimony here is that I've been a very rough person. You know, I used to just kind of, you know, uh, say anything I wanted to say, do anything I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, there was a hand of God which uh, always protected me, you know, which always kept me in the guard. Uh, so uh, on a lighter note, I would say the hand of God was my wife, Victoria, <laughs> who kept me yes, on track. God. Yes, Praise God plants such people in our lives. And that is why Praise we have to be so grateful. Like Praise one of the, grateful. Grateful to be one of the reasons grateful. why, you know, this uh, I'm able to take the classes is because by God's grace, my parents encourage me. They, they never, you know, tell me like, I really feel that, you know, I'm grateful to God. That Absolutely. They encourage me. It, even there are times, you know, sometimes I am so discouraged and I 
do not want to do anything and that is the time they tell me no you go ahead take a session you know build yourself and build other people in faith and that is what is so encouraging and i'm really blessed praise god thank you jesus okay then so we will stop for now and we will continue on the same topic tomorrow as the holy spirit leads so uncle would you like to make the closing prayer for today certainly certainly it will be my uh, what do you call it uh, privilege to do that in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen abba father we thank you abundantly for all your mercies for your graces for your love and yes as human as we have we need your protection we need your guidance we need your uh, love we need uh, your um, grace to lead us as uh, uh, my little girl now a doctor and i promise she's always a little girl dr priya we started the uh, uh, session with uh, uh, we are uh, you know we are always we need to be in prayer because uh, uh the evil one is very sut- subtle and very unknowing in our unknowingness also you no know, will uh, try to uh, uh deceive uh deceivers so we need your we need your guidance your your touch your your protection and the only way is uh, i like to say to 2 corinthians 10:5 it says um cast uh, um every thought of yours in obedience will god i think that is the uh, that is the punch line every uh, uh, captivate every every thought of us in obedience with god we make this prayer to jesus christ our lord amen 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 thank you uncle for this beautiful prayer thank you priya thank you